Hi and welcome, it's Jenna from McGuire. I'm sorry I haven't posted a video in a while. Been really busy with the family since it's summertime. But I'm here today to share a technique that is an oldie but goodie, and I call it watercolor block stamping. This I think is where the smooshing technique that many people do um, kind of originated. I remember about 15 years ago when I started in the stamping industry, I was doing some work for Hero Arts and I went to my first stamping class that Hero Arts was teaching and Sally Trademan taught this technique and I think it is brilliant. It's very simple and fast to do. You don't need many supplies for it. So I'm going to make a bunch of card examples for you today. I will be using some stamp sets from the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero Kit. This is the July kit. Now the first two stamp sets I show you here are the ones I use the most, and they are included in the kit, along with the matching dies, some other products, including some fun paper that I'll use at the end of this video. I will also be using a few other stamp sets that are available as add-ons for this kit, so they are sold separately but I will be using these kind of mixed together throughout the video, very simple stamping, but these images are great for coloring too, even though I didn't do that today. Now for this technique, you need some acrylic blocks. Now you could use any shape or size block. I'm using three today that are from Hero Arts. I like that it has Hero Arts engraved on the side, but these are four by three and a half, three by three and two by three. But again, use whatever you have. It will work with any acrylic block. I'm using watercolor paper. I chose to use the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper because it's bright white, and I also wanted to use the textured side of it. You could also use Ranger's Watercolor Paper. It's the same paper, but available in 8.5 by 11. I will use a specialty watercolor paper at the end of this video. That paper is beautiful and included in this kit, so stay tuned for that. So let's get started with this technique. I'm using a small acrylic block for this and I'm inking it up with Distress Ink. This is picked raspberry and then I put down some ripe persimmon and then some wild honey. But you could use any colors of Distress Ink for this and I'll use many in this video. Distress inks blend well together so you could pretty much use any color combo you want. Now I spritz this generously with water so it almost pours off the side of the block as I carefully flip it and stamp it onto the textured side of my watercolor paper. You want to press it down so that all of the water and ink comes in contact with the paper, then put something heavy on it and leave it for about five minutes. I find five minutes is kind of magical because the color is on it long enough to be intense. If you take it off right away, it'll be very light. And you don't want it to be too much longer than five minutes or it kind of starts to dry weird between the block and the paper. So I find five minutes with something heavy on it is perfect. So here's another example with some blues and greens. I'm gonna press it down till it's completely in contact, put something heavy on it and let it sit. Now this technique is great for rainbows. Here I'm going to use a bunch of different rainbow colors together. However, you really could just put down pink, yellow, and blue of the Distress Inks, and the water will blend it and create the colors in between. But here I did all of the colors. So I'm gonna mist it so that it's very generously applied with water, flip it down onto the watercolor paper, press it down, and put something heavy on it. It's amazing how well this technique works. Now for this example here, I'm not letting it sit very long. I wanna show you that if you don't let the block sit on there long, you end up getting a very light look. So see how I pull it off, all that ink kinda of goes off to the side, which is fine. You can dab some of that away and let it dry, and you can end up with soft results, which is still beautiful. But if you want more intense looks, you wanna leave that block sitting on there for a few minutes. But this is a great way to get a watercolor area on a card. So here's one that I did with just pink and blue, yellow and blue ink. When I pull the block off, it does leave a splotch. It kind of always does that. I just dab it up and check out how gorgeous those three colors blended together. And because I let the block sit on this one for about five minutes, the color is very intense. This one, I just did two colors. I did seedless preserves and picked raspberry. After I dab up some of the extra color, I will let it sit to dry and the results will be beautiful. Now I use Distress Inks because they work really well with water and therefore work great for this technique. However, you can also use maybe Tombow markers or Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, scribble those on an acrylic block and add water to stamp. 
You could also use other dye inks, such as Hero Art Shadow Inks. It's really amazing how every single one gives you a different look. Here's that rainbow one that I showed you earlier with the different colors of Distress Ink, and look how beautiful that turns out. Again, you wanna just leave this to dry completely on its own, and you'll end up with wonderful watercolor background without any effort. And I like that you have kind of a clean rectangle area where the watercolor is contained. So I did want to show you that you can get that rainbow look with just the three colors. So here we have picked raspberry, mustard seed, and salty ocean. I'm gonna put this down pretty heavy because I want this to be intense. After I've covered it, I'm going to mist it generously with water and I'm going to press this one kind of hanging off the edge of my watercolor paper. Now again, I used the texture side of the paper, but you could use the smooth if you wanted to. So after I let that sit for about five minutes with something heavy on it, I take it off, I get really intense rainbow color. You can see how it blended together to create the orange and green also. Now I did want to mention that you could skip putting something, he something heavy on it and get this fun splotchy look where there are some areas where the ink doesn't come in contact with the paper. I think this is a beautiful technique. I didn't use it today because I was afraid my white heat embossing would get hidden by the splotchiness, but I wanted to show you you could do that. Now in this example, I wanted my colors to be a little softer, so I put less ink on the block I still sprayed it with a good amount of water and pressed it down for five minutes. Now, if you want it to be really light, you could do more water and take the block off sooner. But check out how beautiful that turned out. The edges are a little messy, so I'll end up trimming this one down. Here are a few other examples that I did. This one, I put squares of ink on my block, spritzed it and stamped it down. Again, you're gonna get that muddy mix if you use a bunch of colors, but just dab that away and what you're left with will be beautiful. Now you see where the ink kind of smooshed out the side there? Don't worry, we'll fix that in a moment. Here's another one where I didn't put something heavy on it, so some of the white paper still shows through. Really gives a cool effect, and it took no effort at all. Now this one I did a lot of color and less water and let it sit a little bit longer, and I got really intense results. Here I just did the pink, yellow, and blue inks, and it blended together to create more colors. So really, you can't go wrong with this technique. Try a bunch of different color combinations and size blocks. Here I did the circle block and check out how cool that turned out too. Now because I didn't leave the block to sit there for about five minutes, I end up with a much softer look. Now here's something else that you can do that is really fun. Now for this one, I put the ink on the block, added my water, and put it onto the watercolor paper. But then I kind of hit the block, like I punched it a few times, and that causes the watercolor to kind of squirt out the sides, and you get this fun splatter look coming out from the rectangle of color. So I'm going to kind of pounce my uh, mug on top to kind of get the color to squirt out the sides, and look at that fun effect that you get. So if you want something with a little more interest, you can try that too. Okay, so if you get a splotch of color where you don't want it, no worries at all. You can just uh, sand it away with a sand eraser once it's completely dry. There are a few different sand erasers out there and I've linked to both in the past and they both work great. If you don't have a sand eraser, you can use a craft knife to scrape the color away. Watercolor paper is very forgiving, so you won't see anything. You can also use an eraser to smooth the paper out when you're done. And there you go, you'll never know there were any bits of color where you didn't want it. Okay, so now let's pull all these backgrounds together into cards. I'm gonna show you a few of the steps along the way. They're the same pretty much on every card. I'm using those Hero Arts, uh, My Monthly Hero card kit stamps. Put it in my Misty. You want to make sure that this is completely dry. You can heat set it if you need to and that you use an anti-static powder tool over it. After you've done that, you can stamp your images with Versamark ink. If you have a Misty, you can use that so you can double stamp with Versamark ink. So you can make sure you completely stamp the images on this textured paper. However, you don't have to do that. You just wanna make sure you stamp the Versamark ink firmly so that it gets into the crevices of the paper. I then added Hero Arts white embossing powder. Now before I heat emboss this, I'm actually going to scrape away some of the powder on this floral image. I'm just gonna kinda clean that area up so that I can stamp this bow on top afterwards. So I'm moving some of that embossing powder out of the way and heat setting it. 
This is much faster than doing any kind of masking technique. So now everything's heat set here and we can stamp my little bow in that open area that we created. So again, I'm using the Misty, but you don't have to. But do be sure to use an anti-static powder tool so that you don't get powder stuck to the watercolor background. So I went ahead and stamped with Versamark ink, adding some more white embossing powder and heat setting that. I did decide to color in my images with my Wink of Stella for some shimmer. And then I can use a white gel pen to fix any areas that didn't heat emboss completely. And there is our first example. Okay, here's another example. This time I'm going to put a bouquet of flowers in a watering can. Now to prevent doing masking, I'm just inking the top of the flowers only, not the stems, since the stems would be covered by the watering can will stamp. So I'm gonna put on the embossing powder and go ahead and heat set that. Now in between every step, I'm sure to again use that anti-static powder tool, just so we can be sure we get clean results. So here I'm going to stamp the watering can with Versamark ink. You really don't need the Misty for this technique. I just have a habit of using it, so that's why I am. Stamping this with Versamark ink, I'll add the white embossing powder. And anywhere that those overlap, I'm going to use my craft knife to knock the embossing powder away. That's one of the great joys of using clear Versamark ink, that you can do fake masking with embossing. Okay, so I added a greeting under that also. Then I colored in the image with some shimmer from my Wink Stella pen. And we have another example completed. So I did that with all of those backgrounds that we created. I just did some embossing on top of the watercolor backgrounds. But next I wanted to show you the cool watercolor paper that is included in this month's kit. This paper is so beautiful. It has a ton of texture to it and it's nice and thick. It is a handmade paper that's professional grade, cold press, and 100% recycled watercolor paper. Now the kit includes three five by seven sheets and one six inch circle deco edge piece. So a lot is included in the kit. I didn't use it for all of my examples simply because I didn't have it in time to do so, but it works great for this technique or any watercolor technique. Now, since this is a thick textured paper, I also added water to the paper in the area where I'm going to put my inked and wet block. I just find that it helps to get into the crevices better, but you can skip it if you want to. So here I put it down onto the textured watercolor paper, put something heavy on it for five minutes and pulled it off. Now, since this is thicker, it didn't absorb as much in that five minutes. So I'm just using my heat gun to kind of move the color around if you wanted to, you could leave the block on for longer. Here's another one that I did, and you can see the texture in this paper. I just love it. Now, there are two ways you can use this paper to kind of trim it down. You could use a trimmer, or if you want to, you can tear the edge. It's easier to figure out where to tear or to control the tearing if you use a wet brush to put like a line of water. You let that absorb in and then it'll tear right along that line and it really helps control the tearing. And that soft edge is just beautiful with this paper. So after I let those dry completely, I can do heat embossing on this. Even though there's a lot of texture on this paper, you can stamp on it if you stamp firmly to be sure to get into the little crevices and it works beautifully. So this watercolor paper, you can do traditional stamping in watercolor or do this block watercolor technique. And again, this fun watercolor paper is included in this Hero Arts kit. Okay, so after I did the technique and the heat embossing on top, I just kept the rest of the card simple by adding it to a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And then I did a little bit of sewing with my sewing machine. Now I have a sewing machine I use only for uh, my card making and I use an upholstery thread for it. I will link to the sewing machine that I use. I love this guy. I've been using him for many years on my cards and I've never had a problem. Now what I like to do is kind of pull the strings to the inside of my card and tie them off there. I don't mind that the sewing shows on the inside of the card because it adds to that homemade or handmade feel. You can also tie the ends on the front of the card and leave a little bow of the string if you wanted to. If you do want to hide that sewing, you could sew it onto itself. Just put the sewing on the watercolor paper only and then glue that to the front of the card. 
Now, before we go, I did want to just walk you through each of the examples I made to show some tips along the way. I do have photos of these cards on my blog if you want a closer look. Now, this example here is where I put kind of blocks of color on my acrylic block before I wet it and stamped it. I kept this simple by just doing two lines of stitching around the outside. The reason I did two lines of stitching is I was kind of going crooked, so I added another line to make it look like I did it on purpose. Then I glued that onto a light gray note card. I like to use light gray a lot when I have a lot of bold color, just to kind of tone it down a bit. Now this example on the left, I just did one little bit of stitching along the left edge and I kept everything else plain. You can see a little bit of that shimmer that I colored in all of the images. I did stamp my envelope with a matching sentiment. I either used black ink or a Hero Arts silver ink, but it is on the flap of each of my envelopes. Now here I just did another thin line of stitching, and this one is black heat emboss. I thought since that little watercolor block image that I did there was so soft, the black would stand out better. Now this one is probably one of my favorites because I like those bright, cheerful colors on the card. You can see the little bit of shimmer. This one didn't take long at all because I only heat embossed two images and did quick stitching around the edge. Here's the first example that I showed you. You can see how intense that color is by doing that block stamping. And then I just did a thin line of stitching right outside of that watercolor area. Now this one, I actually accidentally splattered a lot of color around the edge. So I just decided to trim it down, add some sewing and put it on a craft note card. Now on this next example, I couldn't find the right place to stamp a sentiment, so I die cut from some gold glitter paper, the word thanks, from a Hero Arts thanks die, and added that on top. I really like the watercolor block on this one. I created it by just using picked raspberry and salty ocean, so pink and blue, and it blended together to create the purple in between. And for this one is the one I showed you that seedless preserves and picked raspberry, so just purple and pink, created a nice solid area for our heat embossing to sit on. Now on this one, I stamped your lovely directly onto the watercolor area and I messed it up. So I covered it up by just stamping the same sentiment and gluing it on top. And I don't think anybody will ever know. It does add a little bit of dimension to the card, but I did like the result. For these next two cards, I decided to do a little bit of messy sewing machine zigzag stitching in three little spots around the watercolor block area. So that just kind of gives a little finishing touch, but it doesn't take that long to do. Now here is the example where I did like the splatter, where I forced some of the ink to kind of splatter outside of the acrylic block. I thought it was a really fun way to add a little bit of interest. And again, I just glued this onto a soft gray note card and added a little bit of stitching. Here's one of the backgrounds where I didn't press the block down, so some of the white shows through. And I really think the results are fun. Here's the rainbow one where we stamped the flowers inside of the pot. On this one, I actually did the stitching right onto the watercolor to give it a nice framed look. Now on the next few, I kind of had a messy look around the watercolor uh, block area that we created. So I just trimmed it down and I added it to the card with a little bit of zigzag stitching. So this gives it a nice cleaner look if that's something that you really want. And here is another example. I liked how bright that background ended up. So I just decided to trim it down and stitch it right onto the card. And last but not least, we have the two cards that I created using that handmade watercolor paper that's included in the Hero Arts My Monthly Hero July kit. You can see the beautiful texture and color that you get with this paper. So there you have a very long video showing a very simple technique. I just wanted to give lots of examples. I do have photos of all these cards on my blog and links there and in the YouTube description below to the products that I use. Thanks so much for watching and sticking with me in this long video. There are two other videos in the middle that might be of interest to you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll hope to see you back here soon.